episode 33 of the artist spotlight <laughs> and we are very pleased to have the one and only ronald con the third did i say that right ronald con yep uh ronald is here um and i'm gonna go ahead and run through the uh description here and try not to mess up i really should proofread these at a time but here we go uh, I'm an artist that enjoys exploring the intersection of creativity and technology with uh, an eye for mystical. Uh, I create works to evoke a personal mythology and explore the mind. I believe creativity uh, is a place we can uh, interact with and that technology will open the door for many millions in the coming years. My art combines illustration, collage, and generative artworks creating using learning algorithms. Oh, create using learning. Wow, this is fascinating. Welcome, Ronald. Thank you. Thank you for having me today. And I see here we do have a um, presentation uh, prepared. I um, haven't actually done a ton of due diligence, so everyone's going to get to experience this art in real time. I do have to sadly uh, remind everyone that his art is actually all sold out on the platform, so um, everyone will have to help me to... Uh, beg him to release more works uh, <laughs> soon. Uh, but anyway, so without further ado, uh, Ronald Kahn, and let's dive into it. There should actually be some more coming soon. I have some submitted, but uh, so keep an eye out for that. I'll, I'll put a message in uh, the Discord when I see it go up because I get an email about it. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, no, and um, we'll make sure to kind of like blast it out too. Like, honestly, I kind of want to be just super sly so I can just pick up a few of my own before, you know, <laughs> like just, I don't know. You said you sold out super fast, so now I'm nervous. Like, am I never going to have a chance? Like, if I'm not, like, maybe I'll just sleep at my computer. That's like the best thing. I need to ask, like, what are the pro collector tips? Like, how do I get a Ronald Con, like, before everyone else gets to it? <laughs> So yeah, there's gotta be some tricks to the trade. <laughs> yeah, we need to get some collector tips shared around. So anyway, here we go. Um, I, can you see my screen all right? Like I can't remember. I can, yeah. Okay, cool. So um, this is your slides. Um, I think we can just scroll through it. You let me know when you wanna go to the next one and we can just talk about each one individually. We can go as slow or as fast as you like. This is your show. So you just let me know. Awesome, yeah, well, so actually uh you're getting a preview of some of the pieces that are coming up inner visions was already released uh, but the longing is one of the ones i submitted so that'll be out pretty soon a lot of my work lately i've gotten really into mindfulness practices and uh reading about even like mystical experiences wow uh, i haven't had any myself unfortunately but i find them really interesting the idea that there's like an inner mental landscape and that people can explore them. So a lot of my pieces, I think about stuff like uh, discovering parts of yourself or even pieces that deal more with emotions. Like the longing was about the isolation of the quarantine and kind of missing out on human connection. Uh, oh yeah, go to the next one because that's one of my favorites yeah, yeah. on there. Um, wow. A lot of my work, I use what are called generative adversarial networks. And those are algorithms that try to take the qualities of one image and apply them to another one. Whoa. Um, and the way it works is that one algorithm analyzes a source image that you give it uh, and looks for things like color patterns, different types of lines, and it'll even try to recognize shapes like human faces. And then it'll apply those traits to an image that you provide it. And a second algorithm evaluates it. And based on its evaluation, it gets passed on to the user or it goes back to the drawing board. So there's like this tug of war between the two algorithms. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of my pieces start with just classic collage illustration. And then I'll start feeding it to the algorithms and get like some really weird results. Yeah. I have to decode sort of oh, i didn't mean to interrupt you what you want to no ask? no no i'm just curious because like you're dropping some like you have a background like from something somewhere very smart like how do you don't just like algorithmically 
like do <laughs> art without having a background in something that like would make like please please give us a little bit of a background story because yeah, i'm very absolutely. curious so i i went to uh, a school of fine arts here in uh the United States, uh, the University of Michigan, and they were very forward looking with using technology. We had like state of the art computer labs and they pushed us to experiment a lot with using technology in our artwork. So I got exposed to some really cool processes back then. I stumbled into working with uh, generative adversarial networks, which get called GANs a lot, largely by accident. Um, I was looking at uh, artificial intelligence research because in my private time I love keeping up with that kind of stuff and um, I heard about algorithms that could among other things make music uh, and so I did some digging and I found one that can do some really weird stuff with images it kind of wow. breaks them down and then assembles them in new and strange ways and it was this total like pivot in my artwork because it allows me to iterate on an idea a lot faster than I can by doing it by hand. You know, I can create a bunch of interesting images that serve as like starting points for pieces mm -hmm. and then finish them with like my classic skills. The way I think about it, it's almost like I have a couple assistants. That <laughs> That's like, what I was going to say. It sounds like, yeah, wow. Sorry, go ahead. That was really great. fascinating. Yeah, no, I think you're right on the same wavelength, you know, like, uh, I always like to tell people like some of my favorite artists of history, like Michelangelo and stuff. They had a, he had like an army of assistants that oh. would do a lot of the grunt work for him. And then he would go in and finish stuff because he was the more skilled sculptor, but like he didn't waste his time like blocking out the forms. He had like wow. That's actually so, like really fascinating information. I honestly never knew. And he really does help like explain like, I don't know, like it, it almost like totally justifies the process and it almost like amplifies it as like almost an evolution of this space in general. Like you're doing something like super advanced, but it seems like totally necessary with the way society is going. And it's really impressive. I think like this angle and the way that you're doing this, like, I don't know, like, so the one on the right in Age of Wonder like those colors are like almost like supernatural like it's insane yeah. um like so you're telling me that 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 that's how kind of that was accomplished yeah i can i can sort of explain how it works so the the statue figure came from a open access artwork photography project that was done by the i believe the met museum here in chicago um they put out a bunch of images that were totally like royalty free could be used for anything uh, the background was this like cathedral window that I drew, but that crazy rainbow colors, I, I gave, uh, I just threw like paint splatters on a canvas, like really bright colors, and then ran that through the algorithm. And it applied like the really bright neon colors to the details of the window wow. in this weird way. It took a couple passes to get yeah. it the way I like. And then a lot of the times I take the image that I get from those algorithms and will draw and paint on top of it and Photoshop or like work with the colors. Um, wow. Yeah. I mean, honestly, this is, this is like a fascinating amount of colors that somehow work so beautifully <laughs> together. I don't really understand it totally, but I love it. Like it's so, I don't even know where my eyes land on this one. Like, it's just like, there's, I'm, like no matter where my eyes land it's like really interesting and fun um wow so i'm i'm, I'm really well done i mean this is this is cool i don't know yeah. if i want to move on to the next slide do i have to <laughs> <laughs> no we can hang out and check it out for a while this is a great example of so the the source images were the same i built this like collage sketch I found these crazy statues mm -hmm. that are like this sitting man and I layered them on top of each other and cut them in half and like painted between them. But then I ran it through the algorithm and it got two completely different like color schemes to it. One source image was just pictures of flowers I took outside. That's where like the greener one comes from. Wow. And then the other one was like an old painting of mine. Wow. Um, I use a lot of my own artwork when I define a source image for the algorithm to work with, because I think it's interesting. Yeah. Um, and uh, 
And I'm always looking for like a certain color scape. So sometimes I'll just go snap a picture or something. Yeah.、Um, but I wanted this. I released these as part of the same set. This should be coming out soon. Oh wow! Because、um, I wanted people to see that like、uh, there's a lot of possibility for experimentation、um, in like different iterations in my work too. I spend a lot of time revisiting old work. Yeah. Like. People will probably see these compositions again in like a couple of months, but with like totally different colors and like maybe some new things added to them. Yeah, yeah. I think my artwork, I like to like evolve it over time as I learn new skills. You're.、Uh, I want to say、uh, he was just here. Is he still here? We have one of our artists,、um, Asben, who is has done this in one of his arts, and actually, I think I I bought one of his evolutions, and it was so cool to feel like. I had a part in that history、uh, of the artwork itself. Like it's a it's a strange thing, but、um, it's really cool to have like a personal. Oh, it's almost like a variation of your own of something that you really like, and it's part of the story. And it's just something that's like so special. So I I do want to ask like these are deep. Like I don't know if anyone else looks at these and like has that sense of like oh man, there's something really being explained here. But、um, like. I, I I'm gonna ask a weird question. Like, where were you at? Like, when and how did you come up with these concepts here? Because to me, they're really good. Like, it's really you did a wonderful job. But like the title and then the artworks, like, spot on. Thanks, man. You know, it's funny. My my process is very meditative, so I think a lot of the like deeper ideas come from that state of mind. I got really into. Uh, there were some professors at my school years ago that kicked around talking about flow. It was like the big trendy topic back then, but it's the state of mind that creative people and like high performance athletes get into、mm. while they're working on things. And it's this weird combination of every part of your brain working together, whereas、mm. normally、uh, you're using just specific parts to do specific things and. I've been keeping up with the research on flow, and it runs into things like meditation. They talk to like Buddhist monks about it all the time, and、um, it inspired me to have an art practice that's just like an hour and a half to two hours, pretty much first thing in the morning after I have no coffee. No way! Wow. And I go into it pretty fresh. I, sometimes I have like a really good idea burning in my mind, but a lot of the times I just play around with pictures、yeah. and like cut them up until something starts to happen. And I describe my art process to people more like uncovering something that already exists. It's like an archaeological dig or、wow. something like that. You know, I I'm no longer confused why your art sold out so quickly. Does does everyone know about this? Like how crazily like. Like this is like some immense amount of like thought going into these pieces, so it only it kind of makes sense like that it's like now I'm really bullish like if like this is <laughs> <laughs> so sorry I didn't mean to interrupt please please keep going yeah no well thank you for saying so、um, I'm glad to hear people find it interesting because I I have such a hard time explaining what I do sometimes it's like.、Uh, But I look at it more as like I'm almost learning about myself too.、Mm. A lot of the times I look at a piece and I'm like, "What am I trying to tell or like say?" And、um, I think that's also why I keep revisiting them because there's like more to learn.、Um, is the it, next one? Is, oh, oh sorry. sorry, I was gonna ask about. It's so funny. <laughs> I can tell you meditate because of the way you like like are so kind with like me interrupting. <laughs> like, to, like <laughs> I'm like this guy. He's very like 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 one with himself totally. Anyway,、uh, I I almost like lost my train of thought there just because of like how nice you are. <laughs> But、um, what was I gonna mention? Anyway, okay, I'll just keep going. This I'm I'm I have so many questions. I'll just save them to the end. Sure, sure.、Um, these two, one of these, I think I've. Put out yet? I might still be polishing them up now that I think about it. I assembled these because I just wanted to get a good cross section of the different styles I've stumbled into.、Mm -hmm. uh, the one on the right, piety. I got really into looking at old,、uh, like lithographic prints, which is a process where they would etch images onto plates of metal or stone with acid. And like, there's a whole crazy illustrative style that comes out of doing it that way. And it was like. The earliest way to make prints, 
that you could do like several thousand copies of. So there's a bunch of like sacred texts from churches and stuff in this style. Wow. Um, and I really like reading about either like, I love reading books by like Buddhist monks or even like Western uh, spiritual teachers and like, uh, like popes and cardinals that write about spiritual experiences and they're like first-hand accounts of things yeah because i find those descriptions really really fascinating like what's happening in their minds like i'm a very sciencey kind of person so uh i try to understand stuff that way but i just find myself drawn to it so piety was based off of uh i read a book by a scholar named thomas aquinas who was a like a i think like a 14th century monk and scholar mm -hmm totally blanking on his period of time but he would talk about he would spend hours just like staring at a wall say like i'm contemplating the meaning of everything what is this guy talking wow. about um it was amazing so i tried to make a piece that captured some of the imagery he was talking about and then uh and sometimes my work is inspired by that sort of ideas yeah. like i'll read a book and be like i gotta make some art about that it's like how i process things um, and then sometimes the one on the left, I put it there because it was a total happy accident. I still don't know what I did <laughs> in the algorithm to get it basically flipped the colors did to you, like their negatives. Did you just Bob um, Ross us just then? Like you threw in a Bob Ross quote and you just kept talking like a happy accident. Yeah. Just a happy <laughs> little accident. <laughs> just, oh man, I live by that. I'm cause... like cracking up right now. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I didn't interrupt, but I'm like, I didn't want anyone to miss that. You just so subtly <laughs> threw it in there. All right, so, so sorry. That's fine. Oh, no, please. That's that's a great reaction. That's uh, <laughs> like a big part of what I like about playing around with these algorithms is sometimes things happen that I don't expect. I still don't know what I did to get the picture to look like this. I tried to recreate it and I just can't. Wow. Uh, <laughs> and um, that's like the most exciting part is because I can make a bunch of iterations and I can be really experimental in a short time frame. Wow. It's like to try and sit down and do like 30 different versions of the same picture would be really hard uh, time-wise. Whereas I can use these algorithms to kind of smash my art pieces together to get interesting results a lot faster. That's fascinating. 100%. Like I really, and, and I always kind of do this accidentally, but since I do these spotlights, I get to really have a good understanding of the personalities of the artists. And always while someone's talking, I'm thinking like, man, they need to talk to somebody. And that somebody right now, Surreal Serpentine, like you and him, oh my goodness, like that. I mean, just because like your philosophies, the way he approaches, the way, like if he had like some knowledge of what you're doing here and then intertwined with his work, oh my goodness. And you even have like the same, like, uh, I don't know the way your minds work are, are like similar. So anyway, I, I just, love meeting kindred spirits. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, he's wicked. Like he's wicked. Cool. Um, all right. I'm going to keep going, even though I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. I thought I, I, I realized that's like, Oh, I could show some more full sized ones so people can see the details. Wow. This one, uh, was, I was working on a composition and it's the first time I had, stitched together a bunch of different pictures. There's like 10 images in this one that I stitched together and then painted. But if you look kind of closely, a lot of the detailing on the mountains, I found these crazy pictures of, I'm gonna perhaps mispronounce this word, favelas in Brazil, which are these like crazy uh, parts of the city where people have been building houses on top of one another for a couple generations wow. now. Um, and it took a while, but I got it to like pepper in like these weird details almost everywhere on the image. Uh, I'm starting to realize that I can do not only layers in like Photoshop for the collage, but I can run things through separately and then stitch them back together later. Um, so I'm getting closer to like having tons of crazy detail everywhere um, and like more complex compositions now that I'm getting more comfortable with the tool. Mm -hmm. um, so I think a lot of my future work is going to be more complex or at least like have more going on in it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, I'm trying to remember what the inspiration for this was. I think this is one of those images that I just kept adding things to it. Um, I put like the frame in there and uh, over the sun and in the bottom right corner, there's like two people looking up 
at this crazy site. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of the times I just let the pieces sort of happen. Um, yeah. And then I usually will try to figure out what I was getting at later. But, there, um, there is one question I want to ask. Um, and I just, just for the sheer fact that I don't want to forget to ask it, cause it's kind of like a famous question that we have on the show. Um, and I think it kind of relates to this piece. Um, and it, it's kind of like when you do your art, um, and, and do you allow, would you rather people describe themselves what they're seeing and feeling and stuff? Or would you rather like you tell them, um, like what's going on, like, or, or where, where on the line? Do you like to keep it? Because I feel like there can be a mix of both. Like you like to lightly describe. So where are you at on that? That's a great question. Um, and personally, I am more interested in what other people see in my work. Mm. Like I, I will, when prompted, I can talk about like my inspirations and most of my pieces have like a quote attached to them, like a little bit of writing about what I was thinking about at the time. But I'm way more interested in how people react to my work and what they see in it. Because I think artwork is ultimately a conversation and mm -hmm. that, like pieces are pieces are meant to be like shared and they don't really belong to me once I've made them and put them out in the world. It's more about how people react to them and what they see and feel when they experience them. Wow. These are like, I need to meditate more. You have like the best answers to everything. <laughs> hey. Yeah, on a, a total side note, I, I, I really enjoy having a mindfulness practice. It's nothing crazy weird. I just sit and focus on my breathing for like 30 minutes a day. And it, it does help a lot with like mental clarity and mm -hmm. being calm. It's very, I never would have thought I'd be the type of person to do that because I was very hard nosed and skeptical growing up. Yeah. But uh, there's a whole like, science-backed mindfulness movement now um, and i was totally down to give it a try but yeah i'd recommend it to anybody yeah and it almost kind of feels like a great segue into this piece here <laughs> yeah i uh this i got i found this book that's called like dream yoga or something like that and it's a accounts of these monks that purportedly could lucid dream at will all of the time uh, and every night they went to bed, uh, and they even describe how they achieved that. I haven't been able to do that myself, but I'm not that disciplined a practitioner, but I thought it was fascinating, like hearing them talk about being able to explore the dreamscape. Like, uh, like astro project and things of that yeah, nature. Yeah. Like all of those crazy things. You just meet up you with your buddies. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I, like, I, 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 I ninja, I, I know it like what you're talking about, but I don't want to like, <laughs> I, I don't, maybe we'll just have to talk after because this is fascinating. I love it so much, but I don't, this is definitely about your art. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, no, I love it. It's funny. I've come to really appreciate, like, I guess what could be broadly called like the esoteric. I find it really interesting to read like firsthand accounts of crazy stuff like that. Yeah. It's really cool. it, and it, it kind of like makes it, it's like, if you do these mindfulness practices, it makes it easier to be a nice person in life. And the more nice people, like the easier life is for everyone. So I wish everyone to take this. Like, to, I hope the takeaway from this is like, like buy all Ronald's dope art, uh, and then you know, I mean, sorry, but uh, and then and then you know, have some mindfulness practices. You know, um, I think that's that's a very healthy thing you could take away from this. <laughs> yeah, and like. I, it's funny you bring that up because a lot of the times my art serves as a prompt because people ask, of course, how do you make this? What is it about? And it's sort of like promoting that sort of idea because um, I think people can get a sense of like my state of mind when they see these pieces of work. So if it appeals to people, I'm like, oh, well, you can do these things and get into a similar frequency for sure. Yeah, I just posted be excellent to each other. Um... <laughs> throwback Always good advice. oh my goodness like yeah you're like an artistic keanu reeves like that's like to me <laughs> i'm very flattered by that i love that guy dude yeah. he's such dude. a nice guy like oh yeah. man he has so many good stories i love to read about him from his fans and anyway so yeah we need more nice people like yeah in this world yes we do that's a great great point utter oh were, were you still on this one like we can i feel like there's a lot oh, to unpack no, we can, here we can. 
This one, I think the only thing that I would bring up on this one was that this was probably one of the more complex pieces I've done. There's, oh, I don't know, like 20 different pictures stitched together in here. Wow. Like all that temple looking stuff in the background is different pictures. And I like built a escape. I guess I can tell you guys since uh, it'll be coming down the pipeline in a couple of months probably, but I am learning how to use 3D software. Whoa! Uh, um, and I'm really excited about being able to create 3D works. One, from like making more complex spaces, but also because since Terra Nova is a VR space, I really love the idea of like building did giant sculptural works you, that you can walk around. Did in. you say Terra Nova? <laughs> Did I? Oh That's, my god! You're staring. Terror. You're staring at this art piece, and then you—it's like supernova, and then you're thinking, "Yeah, no, yeah. I, I, know, I almost didn't even want to correct you because it was so rad." <laughs> yeah, Terra Virtua. Uh, Terra Nova, the next evolution. Yeah, <laughs> yeah if you guys ever do a 2.0, yeah, right? That's cool. actually yeah. We have to like secure that domain name. <laughs> <laughs> no, like this is honestly, it's like. I'm 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 fascinated, and I can't wait. Like, if you're learning Blender, then it's no like, if you're creating full-on experiences, like that's gonna be rad. Like, I can't even express how excited I am for that. Um, oh, like, the immersiveness that you could bring to the table. Oh man, that'll be nuts. So, oh wow, this is a change of pace. Yeah, this is a an older series that I'll probably bring to Terra Virtua because. Um, I've never really liked selling uh, my art as like prints. I don't know why. I could never find like a company I liked, but I love the idea of of selling NFTs because it, it gives people like a, a part of history and something. It adds that like extra value to digital art that's always been a hard sell. Um, so I wanted to put this in here because I'm working on reworking these pieces and releasing them as NFTs. But this is work I did a lot closer to college um where i got really interested in um aerial photography oh uh, so it's a little hard to tell but this was a picture of like a stadium in brazil during the olympics and then i doubled it and uh stitched it back together and kind of drew and painted over it back when i was working on this stuff i wasn't doing any algorithm work so it was mostly just collage and painting um so I'm trying to revisit these compositions and think about how I can evolve them again. But um, I really like how strange like cities and even landscapes look from this very top down view that you mm -hmm. can only get from like taking a picture from a drone or an airplane. So mm -hmm. I'm always looking at pictures like that um, and they inspire some of my works as well. Do you have days where you just consume and then days where you just create? Because it's like, that, yeah, absolutely. I think an artist has to have a lot of inputs. Um, I have a lot of like random hobbies and things that interest me, but I do spend a lot of time looking at other artists' work or even just interesting images um, and just kind of being deeply curious. Yeah. So, like, just exploring. Yeah. I, I honestly was all, I'm, I'm glad you said that because now I feel like, you know, like, I don't feel so bad if I get caught up just absorbing things before I go into a big creative phase. Um, I like to help with systems and architect structures that, you know, things of that nature, like wireframes and stuff. So I'm glad to know that there's some like crossover there. Oh, absolutely. I think creativity requires a certain amount of like exploring and, you know, kind of consuming information and then letting it ferment in you. Oh, so yeah. I see. I think you know this and I'd be preaching to the choir, but like the way that I sort of do things and I think I think you do as well, uh, is you treat your brain as like a supercomputer where you just have inputs so you can like you put stuff in there and then you just sort of like let it marinate and then the longer you let it marinate, the cooler something can like evolve into. At least I don't know. It tools obviously tools are very helpful and um but ultimately your brain is like the best tool you'll ever have in life it's the fastest like it's a supercomputer um and it's life is kind of like learning how to navigate this supercomputer that you're given um it's kind of awesome like and i think you're really like dude you've like fine-tuned your supercomputer <laughs> like it's, it's impressive and i think 
I think everyone would agree like this, this, your outputs, man, are rad. <laughs> Thank you. That's so interesting because I've described myself that way so many times to mixed reactions. Some people are like, yeah, cool. And other people are like, what is he talking about? So it's cool to, to <laughs> that I just, I just pick up on it. Be. Yeah. I totally know that's, that's your, your, your jam. Because the thing is, I know that's how you can be super effective in your craft as you kind of have that approach. And I can obviously tell like you've, you've honed in your craft and it's fascinating to see this like evolve and really just tell, you know, I know you said you're, you're, passing information through but i think this also is a reflection of who you are so like you can't i mean it's it's both like it's it's truly kind of like a smorgasbord of wonderful like i don't know it's just like i feel like looking at your stuff is like an adventure um and that's why i kind of get frozen on each picture because like i said like my eyes don't have any set place to land which is actually quite fun um a lot of Thank time the, the artists will kind of guides you into a certain point of the picture and it's like um but this is just like i can go anywhere and have a good time and it sounds crazy but like i'm really experiencing that um and it's really really cool oh that's so great that that's your reaction because i really like that sort of idea is having a lot of eye candy for lack of a better word yeah. for people to explore look utter volcano says a big fancy feast for your eyes yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're just gobbling it up man <laughs> so yeah I, I and i say that genuinely like this is this is really cool like i love what you're doing i love how you present it i love how like humble you are and your approach and how you know it's just it really is like the whole package is phenomenal and and you're saying you have 3d stuff coming up is just like makes me super super excited too so um i do want to open up the floor for some community questions as we always do um if they can pick their brains off the floor and then maybe formulate a question uh, <laughs> i honestly sometimes we will get people who are just so like floored by the content that it's almost like difficult to like all right let me let me get a cool question because this guy's smart <laughs> oh man cats will eat you is typing so cats is actually an artist that his spotlight's coming up and he oh, does awesome. he does an artwork a day and he's been doing it for like i forgot how long but like a very very long time and it's like it's really cool oh he stopped oh he's typing again i okay. admire the ability to do that i hit like maybe five days a week i need a day or two off or <laughs> yeah i'm i'm i am very curious about oh here he goes i'll start with the one on top so utter says how did you come to work with the tools or programs um that you use like do you just i guess do you just dabble around to figure out what works or how do you kind of decide what to settle with and how do you pick favorites ah so I can break that down. When I uh, when I went to art school, I was a pretty old school kind of guy. I just liked to draw and like paint on canvas and I had messed around with like wood block printing. But when I got there, they really pushed me to like try and adopt some digital tool sets. So I got exposed to Photoshop and kind of enjoyed working with that and some 3D modeling software. But back then it was a little too confusing for me, I felt. Um, but over time, uh, I started to realize like what digital could do. So a lot of my process has been experimentation. Um, I originally just used Photoshop to do like digital painting, but then I realized that it's a photo editing software more than anything and can do so many other things. Um, and a lot of the tricks I picked up from Photoshop were actually, I used to do photo retouching and um, would restore like old black and white photos and colorize them. Wow. For so when I realized like all of those crazy things I could do, I just kept adding uh, to my art practice. The way I think about it is um, I try to model myself after like the idea of like the Renaissance person and they were, you know, like their idea was that you should learn as much as possible and have as many tools in your toolkit as you can. Um, you know, like I always liked looking, I actually got to go visit a recreation of Michelangelo's workshop in Italy. I spent a month there and, uh, it was fascinating to see like into his mind, like he was an accomplished doctor and an engineer. Oh, 
he would just try, he was so curious, he would just study everything. Um, so I try to model that approach to art making and look at new tools. I'm plugged into a bunch of like magazines and journals. I'm just trying to see what's out there on the bleeding edge all the time. Um, and I think pieces or like my process really started to click together when I got better at compositing images and um, adding texture to them. Mm. One of the things that I didn't like about digital when I was younger was how kind of like flat and cold pieces looked a lot of the times. Um, I really love like the texture of real paint or the imperfections of something handmade, mm. but a lot of the tools I use bring that sort of texture and grain back into the works. Um, and to answer the follow-up question, I discovered GANs largely by accident. There's a great website called Deep Dream Generator that is a publicly run GAN algorithm that I actually use quite a bit because it's pretty awesome. Um, and it's faster than the ones that I've tried to work with personally because you need a lot of computing power and they have like a cloud server for it. So if you're curious about it, I'll, I'll put a link in the Discord for it, but you can play around with it. There's a free version that has some limitations or a paid version that can do a lot more. Um, and from there, that tool has led me to discover a whole bunch of other algorithm-based art-making tools. Um, sometimes I'll just Google things like artificial intelligence plus art and see what comes up. Uh, so that's how I do a lot wow. of my research. So pure uh, curiosity is your driving force, it seems like. Oh, then, yeah. I'm insatiably curious about yeah. things. And that's great. Like, for like, because you have patience and curiosity. And because of that, like, you literally can create stuff for the people who maybe don't have patience, but they have curiosity. <laughs> so yeah. it's nice to have somebody who is willing to be that, like, a uh, catalyst for us. <laughs> So I, I, I have to say thank you for, for that. <laughs> of course. Um, and I think yeah. I, I just want to add, too, is that the thing that excites me about algorithm-based artwork and artificial intelligence and stuff is that I feel a lot of people are limited by, because it does take a long time to get skilled at like drawing or painting, or it's taken me years to get good enough at Photoshop to do the stuff I want to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm re-experiencing these growing pains because like i want to make 3d art right now but blender is a very complicated beast that i don't really understand so mm. it's going to be a while before i can get to the level of like my imagination mm -hmm. and i think technology is going to make that gap like smaller and smaller whereas like anybody can make stuff as so long as they can imagine it and that really excites me because oh um, man I'm yeah. like opening that door for people. Like making tools easier and easier to be able to communicate what's going on in your mind. Like, wow. Like I think, like, yeah, no, I, I see where that, like what you're saying and where we're headed as a society and how fun things are going to get in the future. Um, wow. Yeah. Absolutely. I and do, then it'll all be on blockchain. Yeah. Really and timeless and the global ledger and you get to, you know, share in that history and the ownership and the growth of the artist himself and, really kind of like it really it's 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 just a what's the word i'm looking for it almost feels like serendipitous like this blockchain and everything just kind of came together in this like uh melting pot of like innovation um and it just now with the mainstream focused on it it's like we just got jet fuel added to this like a new movement um and again i always like pinch myself because like to be uh even like a part of it just talking to individuals who are like at the forefront of it like to me it's just like if i had to choose a time to be alive i feel like i would choose i would still choose this time because it's so exciting yeah it is a really exciting time i think we're in the beginnings of some very radical changes mm -hmm. yeah and and anyway i think yeah, I, I, i'm like i'm kind of like lost for words because you really did just like bring a lot of things home for me personally and even my own way of thinking so that was super cool uh, yeah and then cats agrees like we are in the best timeline i, I it's so strange yeah. because some people are like man i wish i was born in the, like the 18th century and that's just that was totally my jam or my vibe but i'm like bro like this is this i don't know like it's a it would be hard for me to want to like you know i don't know I, I'm, I just love everything going on right now i think like exactly. it's like the universe is peaking 
you know like i didn't peak in high school but like now you know (laughs) the universe is like showing off um collectively like what we can do if like we all like kind of like band together and try to solve these issues where middlemen are taking too much off the top and things like that you know wrecking the creative um flow if you will you know i know we touched on that like or or even using the creative flow as a way to fund you know their own selfish desires like it's just i love the fact that we get to let collectors meet the creators where they're at and the creators don't have to be showmen you know to get the attention or the creators don't need like to let like half of their creation be perverted with you know whatever um you know and then keep some of it because opinions of investors or whatever anyway vested interest if you will um i just love that is a great thing yeah it really is and i guess i have such a strong um i don't know like i have an immense amount of passion for it because i get to hear it in some way every single time we have these spotlights it's kind of like the same thing we're all excited about the same thing and just different flavors um and that's really just freedom freedom to do what we want you know freedom to create and not be like you know um just like it like everyone's kind of stuck in a nine to five and i don't i don't know i i like creatives who they're breaking out of that um uh, the breaking out of the matrix and really almost becoming these like beacons of hope for the rest of the world like if they can do it then what other type of work can be liberated because of the blockchain and i think art is just like the beginning you know and and it's not just art art is everything but um you know art is just like the translation of like it's just the kind of like the easiest route for the blockchain to make right now and the fact that everyone is so accepting of it really like makes my heart smile because it's almost validation that we are indeed going in this direction and the world will be like forever changed. Absolutely, man. I know I'm in the right place. Cause that's, that's all of the things that I was thinking about privately about blockchain technology and what it was going to bring to the table for people. Cause I see it as a breaking down of all the gatekeepers. Man. Yeah. It's way more decentralized democratic way for people to find and support the things they care about whether that be art or anything else you know i think eventually more stuff's going to get plugged into blockchain because it's so much more efficient and requires way less like bureaucracy oh and goodness yeah it's so transparent everybody can trust it without too much fuss so i think it's just going to take over I, um, and really empower a lot of people i think this is going to be one of those videos that people share like like for for it's going to be like a response to like why would people buy a png <laughs> yeah <laughs> and so they could just share this video and then hopefully that'll do uh, enough like it'll explain enough to them because i think i feel like we covered a lot um in terms of like the space in terms of really everything like what you can do how far you can take it um and 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 where we're headed so like you could just bookmark this video like when it's on youtube and be like here just watch this have a coffee watch this and then you'll hopefully you'll come to knowledge of what's going on so (laughs) i do want to um let everyone know we are at the top of the hour that we started on (laughs) uh so i want to give the floor oh i didn't even realize oh wait that was my other screen i want to give the floor to ronald to basically share anything he didn't get a chance to or um say something to his collectors or uh thanks what really i like to kind of give the last bit of the show over just in case you know we didn't you know have enough time to touch on everything so it's all you ronald awesome it's been really exciting to be a part of this space today and it confirmed a lot of things i suspected about you guys in terms of your intentions and definitely on the same wavelength to people who find my art interesting there's more coming um i'm going to be trying to output a little more now that there's like a a more captive audience i uh i got kind of tired of making art for instagram so to speak um but this is way more exciting to me and i i just posted a link to Deep Dream Generator, which is a great introduction to algorithm-based art making. There's a bunch of other stuff out there I'd be happy to share with people too. I always implore people that, I think everybody has 
a creative potential in them. It might not be image making, but um, I think finding that thing that you can express yourself in is really, really important to having like a good, well-rounded life. And I think technology is a huge, like new tool set for people. Uh, it's a lot more accessible um, and it seems to allow people to get to the place they want to go faster. Um, so I'm all for that. And um, I guess the only other thing I uh, talk would say is that uh, definitely like be involved. Um, I think spaces like Terra Virtua and blockchain in general are enriched by like more participation. So don't be shy, like share your work, uh, you know, try to get into this space, engage with artists. I haven't met an artist that doesn't like talking about their work. Um, so if anyone ever wants to DM me, feel free to, uh, I check discord most days, um, and be happy to answer any questions or help other artists figure out how to use these tools.